Love and Light. This is Healthy Talk Show, recording live on Saturday, January 18th, 2020. I'm Robert. And I'm Marissa. Show notes will be over at healthytalkshow.com forward slash five zero four fifty. On this episode of Healthy Talk Show, we have dating apps and smart TVs spying on you. But first... Tonight, emails and conversations between Massimo Gianelli, Lori Lachlan, and the mastermind of the college admissions cheating scandal, Rick Singer, shed new light on the alleged scheme. Prosecutors just released a trove of emails and call recording logs connected to the case. The emails also reveal how USC was trying to court one of Lachlan and Gianelli's daughters, even as prosecutors say the couple was plotting a sham resume to get her admitted as a fake rower on crew. Wow. Yeah, isn't that crazy? That's not looking good for her. No. Don't cheat, guys. Just get a tutor. It's not worth it, exactly. Just (laughs) study hard. In this email with the redacted sender, the writer says in part, Hi Massimo, please let me know if I can be at all helpful in setting up a one-on-one opportunity for her. Customized tour of campus for the family, I'd also be happy to flag her application. In response to the release of that email, USC says tonight, what was being offered to the Gianellis was neither special nor unique. Tours, classroom visits, and meetings are routinely offered. The primary purpose of a fl- One-on-one, really? Yeah. Really? The one-on-one part is routinely offered? Let's address the one-on-one yeah. part. This statement doesn't say anything about one-on-one. It says tours are routinely offered. Okay, what about yeah, the we, one-on-one we've, attention? We've all seen those big tour yeah, groups. Yeah, where going. you have to follow somebody holding up a flag yeah. that you can barely see because you have 5,000 people in the group with you. Yeah, I've seen it, a lot of those. And it's a student, not anyone you know that's going to get you into the college. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's all students. <laughs> yeah flag is to be able to track the outcome of the admission review process. Sure. Also in the court documents, yeah. an email from Singer to Massimo. Massimo, can you send me a 50K check to USC? Additionally, the rest of the 200K will be paid to our foundation. And this... And Wait, what was for- that? The, the price of submitting a college app these days? Yeah, it's apparently. <laughs> 50K. Another 200,000 on the side. Wow. That's expensive to Gianelli with payment instructions to Donna Heinel, the senior women's associate athletic director at USC, who was also charged in the admissions scandal. Woo-wee! Wow. That's a lot. A lot to unpack there. A lot of stuff being exposed. Pretty <laughs> egregious Ooh. stuff going on. Yeah. It's our 50th episode, so if you want to send us $50,000, yeah. that'd be great. Thank you to everyone who has <laughs> sent us 50 bucks. We really Thank appreciate you. that. We didn't think about that. But yeah, if you want to send us 50 bucks, feel free. HealthyTalkShow.com slash support. Keep us going. We really appreciate everybody. Thank you so much. Next story, CBS This Morning. This was the scene outside New Jersey State Capitol Monday. We the people! Thousands of people protesting as lawmakers debated parents' rights to keep their kids unvaccinated. Have you ever vaccinated your children? I haven't. I have not. That was my religious choice. Never? Wow. Wow. That's impressive. Choice. Lisa DeRogotis has three children. All of them would have been kicked out of school if the bill to eliminate religious exemptions passed. While some religions do not object to vaccinations, Others don't trust the practice. According to the CDC, major side effects of vaccines are rare, and there is no proof that vaccines cause autism, a common point of misinformation. My worry is that we're trending the wrong way. We're going in the wrong direction. Dr. Peter Hotez is an infectious diseases specialist at Baylor College of Medicine. He says epidemics like last year's measles outbreak, in which nearly 1,300 people were infected, will become the new normal as faith in vaccines declines. The fact now that we're seeing children get sick, hospitalized, in ICU, dying from vaccine-preventable diseases, all because of a fake misinformation campaign, is very concerning. New Jersey's bill will go up for debate again in the state Senate this week, and it is contentious. One Democratic senator said, quote, we're ready to go to war, we will pass this bill. Five states have banned religious exemptions, including New York, Maine, West Virginia, Mississippi, and California. However, Maine is trying to repeal their ban with a referendum this March. Now, with these religious exemptions being banned, and people are still not vaccinating their children. Yeah. It's still, they're still finding ways around it, so it's not really doing anything, so it's all bullshit as far as that's concerned. And they never address the main criticism from a lot of people who are not really 
okay with vaccines. It's the vaccine schedules early on, like when the child's first born. That's a lot of criticism, but they're not going to address that. They're not going to talk about that, how they pump the child full of a bunch of shit as soon as they come out of the womb. Yeah. That's the main, that's when you talk to people who are really against this stuff, they're going to talk about that more, not about, oh, I'm not going to vaccinate my child, but some people do not vaccinate their children. It's fascinating. I like the signs that said my body, my choice. We always yeah, agree with that when it comes exactly. to Exactly, abortions. And, yeah. But we don't when it comes to vaccines. Why? So if you want the government to decide and make laws about that, then it's not your body, your choice after all. Yeah. So it's what the government tells you. It's a, we have to be really careful with that. And I'm never sure what these misinformation campaigns are always talking about. I don't see these campaigns. Yeah, I, I, I don't know where they're at, but, yeah. but you know, there's there's a lot of campaigns everywhere for a lot of misinformation that's, about everything. But well, that's also the beauty of freedom of speech. Exactly. And it's up to you to decipher your own information. Exactly. Read and who's, who exactly? And again, we're talking about the pharmaceutical industry. They're the vaccine industry. They're one of the largest industries in the world. They're the most powerful. Who's going up against them? I do not. Who? who what industry? Yeah. What? Big no, oil? What, no what other industry What other industry has a vested interest to right. go after the pharmaceutical industry with this whole vaccine bull yeah. propaganda crap? Think about that. Yeah. Where's the profit behind that? There, I don't see any profits being made from people saying, I don't vaccinate my child. I don't... Yeah. So we have to think about true. this. It's... I, talking about profits and greed. Democracy now. Tanks and AR-15s. Mom for housing speaks out after mir- militarized eviction from vacant Oakland house. This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Shea. We turn now to Oakland, California, where a group of unhoused mothers were evicted Tuesday from a vacant house they'd been occupying for two months. Facing homelessness and skyrocketing rents, the working mothers moved into the house on 2928 Magnolia Street in November and stayed despite an eviction notice from real estate developer Wedgwood Properties. Their movement, Moms for Housing, gained international attention and became a rallying cry against rampant income inequality and homelessness in the Bay Area and across the U.S. On Tuesday, as one of the mothers, Dominique Walker, joined us live on Democracy Now! from a studio in Berkeley, sheriff's deputies carried out a pre-dawn militarized raid aimed at evicting the moms. Just after 5 a.m. Tuesday morning, uh, Dominique pulled the airpiece out of her ear, and they left the studio. It was Tuesday morning, about just around uh, 6 a.m. Um, California time. Dozens of armed deputies, including a tactical team, descended on the house on Magnolia Street, broke down the door with a battering ram, sent a robot into the house, allegedly to search for possible threats. The deputies then arrested two mothers who were living in the house, as well as two of their supporters. All four were released on bail Tuesday afternoon. Okay. A lot. There's a lot here. Yeah. First of all, I want to know more about this robot. Yeah. They mentioned it a few times in the question. interview, and they don't actually show pictures. So I, where's the robot? There are a lot of tax dollars being used to get these moms, these yeah. homeless moms, out of this house that's owned by Wedgwood Properties, who pretty corrupt company. They're they're just a property company. They're one of these investors that just buy houses and flip them. That's what they do. That's what's going wrong with the real estate market. That's why nobody. That's why people like us can't afford housing. Yeah, and that's Especially why in California, that's why we left California because you just can't afford to live there anymore. That's why a lot of people left California. <laughs> but these moms are being kicked out. They Well, let's what's the solution? We got another clip. I want to go back to the Mother Jones piece that we quoted the other day in Oakland where buyers routinely offer hundreds of thousands of dollars over asking prices. There are nearly four vacant properties for every homeless person. It's not so much an issue of scarcity but of distribution. Um Carol. Four vacant properties for every one homeless person. If that's true, that's a very bizarre number. <laughs> that, uh, yeah. That's really weird. Think. Let's think about that. Four vacant houses for every one homeless person. I I like to look into that. Yeah, that's, I'm not sure how they determined that, but yeah, that's it's it's probably not far from the truth though. So if you swing it back, maybe it's closer to one vacant house per homeless person or something. But yeah. even that, that's yeah. still egregious. I'm not. It's weird. Well, uh, you were in the studio as well when the two of you hightailed it out of there to get back to the house as the battering ram was moving in. Can you explain the owner of this house, uh, how it was the house was vacant for two years, and the significance of what's happening in Oakland, and of course, larger than that? This one home, particularly in the state that it's in, represents 
very little to the owner of this property. And um, Wedgwood Properties, which has 96 subsidiaries all over the United States, operational in 18 states, is a very, very wealthy organization. Mm -hmm. So this... Yeah, they're also in the wedding game. <laughs> they also they offer very affordable price weddings, though. Oh, I wonder how they do that. Very affordable. <laughs> Home represents hundreds, if not thousands, of other homes that lie vacant, able to be used by Oakland residents. If there are four empty homes for every one unsheltered person, you know, the city could potentially purchase those, um, put them in the land trust. With and what money? Purchase all these properties? Apparently, there's a nonprofit that is able to do that. But yeah, I, I'm not sure where the money is coming from. Yeah. Everyone and get people off the streets tonight, if that was the goal. But because we have a market, a, a housing market that is um, highly speculative, speculative and um, we are selling homes to the highest bidder, we have the outcomes, which are not coincidental which is some of the highest levels of poverty and homelessness in uh, the state of California. I think just California in general has the highest po levels yeah. of that in the U.S. So just expand it out a little bit more. And why is that? I don't know. It's California. What's California doing wrong? Apparently they're doing something wrong. Well, but how can you control the investors, I guess? Yeah. Because that's what's really going on. It's prime real estate in California. Yeah. Everyone wants to live there. So then all the big companies swoop it up. But. Yep. <sighs> Switching gears to PBS NewsHour. Water des uh, desalination being pushed in water stress Chennai. Chennai? Chennai? How do you say it? Uh, Chennai? I have to say it says Chennai, in, but I don't know. It's in the report. But there may be another solution. However, economics professor S. Janakarajan says rainwater is also abundantly available and desalination the wrong answer. We are not in the Middle East. With so much of rainfall, desalination is extremely irrational. Chennai on average gets... Desalinization is extremely irrational, huh? Oh, interesting. It's being pushed. Being pushed really hard. It's 55 inches a year, far more rain than Seattle or London. One big difference, he says, is there's been rapid population growth here. In recent years, Chennai has become a center for car manufacturing and for information technology. PayPal. They show a picture of a PayPal building just for your audio listeners. A giant PayPal building. It's funny. <laughs> That's drawn millions of high-tech workers, factory workers, and migrants from surrounding rural areas. And all of that has dramatically increased the demand for water while at the same time reducing the supply of it. Ironically, all the new housing has left residents cut off from access to fresh water. Builders paved over hundreds of acres of wetlands, natural reservoirs, and drains that replenished aquifers oh below. Oh my goodness. Yep, there it is. So we destroyed the water, but now we need to build these desalination. <laughs> Let's just build the desalinization plant on top of these aquifers too, so we uh, can just store the water underneath and then, yeah, and yeah. pour water. Let's do it. Yeah, res let's use more resources for the water instead and, of just leaving the water, letting the water be there. And then yeah, and and let's not even talk about how much energy it costs to do desalination because water has a very high specific heat, takes a lot of energy oh, yeah. to turn it into steam, which they have to do to get it away from the salt. So. Yep, yep. And then what, they're going to need more energy, more plants? Yeah. <laughs> How about we just stop building on yeah. water? How about you build on land? <laughs> yeah, so the rain can go back into yeah. the aquifers. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. When the monsoon is heavy and extremes have become more common in a hotter world, the water has nowhere to drain. Uh, because they put concrete everywhere. Let's yeah, not forget. water cannot drain through concrete. Concrete, yeah, water does not pass through it. So when you install concrete, guess what? You create flooding issues. Concrete is not a savior. Asphalt, this stuff is not the best. It's we got to really rethink it. Yeah, that's why cities have to be really ca careful when they plan that there's not too much concrete. Cause... Yes, exactly. The century, and 2016 was a, a drought of the century, and 2018 was again an extreme uh, drought year. What you see over here are paddy lands. Nityanand Jayaraman, an environmental activist, took us on a tour to see the impact of encroachment and development. So this used to be a rice field. This used to be rice fields. And uh, in order to construct here, the groundwater level is very, very high. So to build your foundation for these large buildings, 
you need to, you know, dig bore wells and then suck out the groundwater and pump it out. What? So you're actually just... Yeah. You have to suck out the ground. We have to pump out the groundwater and destroy it and get rid of it. Yeah. And, and then now we don't have it. Yeah. What? And now you need to desalinate. Now you need well, desalinization what? plants. What did you think was going to happen? Yeah. What did you, well, <laughs> it... Throwing away your future. Trading water. So he just said it. You're throwing away your future. Water for land and building has been happening since the 1600s when the British East India Company created the city of Madras, present day Chennai. In those days, thousands of lakes and tanks dotted the landscape, serving small agrarian communities around them. So virtually every one of these blue patches that you see are human-made engineered irrigation tanks that they date back to more than a thousand years. Steadily, these tanks were built over or abandoned in a world where Jayaraman says land was highly valued, a trend that's been particularly intense over the past two decades. And the modern uh, economic parlance, be it in India or in Houston, Texas, uh, what development means is constructing more buildings, paving more open earth with hard concrete or asphalt. For their part, residents in these new developments have their own complaints. We pay our taxes, but we don't get the services that the municipality is supposed to give us. Oh, I'm surprised. You pay your taxes, you're not getting the services you pay for. Whoa, I've never heard this story before. Asha <laughs> and Prabhak Hoda have been waiting for a decade to get their 50-unit apartment complex hooked up. A decade! ...to the city's water and sewer system. It's been 15 years since the plans were passed. Wow. And still no infrastructure. They rely on private water tankers. This when is Prabhak insane. Hoda saw one oh one. yeah. Importing I, water and trucks. Yeah, this I didn't know this was an industry. <laughs> global warming, climate change. Carbon. <laughs> Climate change of <laughs> yeah. paving. <laughs> yeah. All this stuff, it's all adding up now. Woo-wee. We just stopped and stopped doing stuff. You know, we might be okay. Yeah, we stopped we paving just over down and our... stopped, Yeah, stopped industrializing so damn fast. We might be okay. But if we keep yeah. paving over everything, well, then guess what? I'm trying we to think about downfall. water conservation. Yeah, or conservation. Yeah. <laughs> just in general. She was moved to action. That's where the idea struck me. Like, let's... Just get the rainwater, collect it, and use it. The Kodas. What? Just use rainwater? That's a great, what a fantastic idea. Wow, wow. that's what we did originally. Now we have to collect it ourselves. Yeah. Are we going to desalinate it too? The little desalination <laughs> plants with collecting rainwater? Probably. Convinced their association and dozens of other such complexes to build a simple system of pipes and storage. We have been going around preaching this like evangelists. What has it done to your water costs and your water security? When it rains, we don't buy tankers. We just built the well uh, about six months ago. In a year's time, I would see at least 50 to 70 percent of our water being met by ourselves, not from outside. Beautiful. Rainwater collection has actually been mandated by law in Chennai since 2003, but compliance and enforcement are minimal. Several powerful interests benefit from water shortages. Everyone from private water tanker operators to contractors for multi-billion dollar <laughs> projects like desalination plants. Perfect. Uh, can we hear that again? Oh, who profits from the water yeah, from just, the rain not being captured? Just listen very closely. Yeah, well, this is why they don't enforce the capture. They have these laws to capture rain, but they don't care because yeah. there's no profit behind it. There's no <laughs> reason to. You have vested interest. Dated by law in Chennai since 2003, but compliance and enforcement are minimal. Several powerful interests benefit from water shortages. Everyone from private water tanker operators to contractors for multi-billion dollar projects like desalination plants. Multi-billion multi dollar projects. That's the, those are the projects that get all the project managers really wet and horny. And those are the ones they want, the multi-billion dollar ones. I know how this all works. All these infrastructure projects, these all, this is how it works. People build their careers on this crap. This is disgusting. Yeah, it's, and of course, they're not going to talk about that desalination is a bad idea. Or they should just go back to conservation. No, they're making yeah, money. Money, money, money. Greed, corruption. It's all related. Shanta Nair is a retired head of Chennai's water utility, where she says there's a definite bias for big projects. You lay pipes and you bring water from across, you desalinate, you build huge dams and reservoirs. You don't do small things like water harvesting. So, so this uh, message is not going from the professionals to the political, uh, to the heads also.
No, because the heads are corrupt too yeah. and they want the money. Everybody's corrupt. It's all bullshit. Always about the money. Ah, this is water. This is something that people need to survive. This is crazy. <laughs> And it's just so ridiculous because they didn't have a problem until they started industrializing yeah. and, and then they concrete, created a- adding some huge <laughs> yeah, sky- skyscrapers create- and tech industry PayPal's out there. But now they need more money to yeah. invest in desalination yeah. and what? Because they got rid of all the water. Yeah. That's what happens. <sighs> Frustrating. Moving on to technology and Believe spying. So. All right. Ooh. NBC News dating apps are spying on everyone. Tonight, an alarming warning from national security officials about the personal information you put on your dating apps. If there's an interest to see it, assume that somebody could see it. Our investigation begins... Assume that about all governments, by the way. Just FYI. Assume that about corporations, everything. Everyone wants to see everything. That's what it is. Look at this. ...begins in Europe, where transparency laws give us a window into just how much of your personal data is at risk. This is Victoria. Been on a few dates. Yeah. <laughs> An American who recently moved to London. Here, unlike in the US, European law requires dating apps to turn over data they keep on users if requested. We had three people living in Europe request their data. We found that Hinge collected a stunning 250 pages of data Whoa. on Victoria in less than six months. Six Two. months, 250 pages of data. That's to, a lot of data. I know. What I'm the just, hell do they have? Every location, what they ping you. Every yeah, they're stuff. always oh these oh, being tracked. NBC News looked at these four dating apps: Grinder, Tinder, Hinge, and the League. Never heard of the League. Apps and found they collected personal information, including everything from exact location data to sexual preference. Some collecting users' chat messages and Grinder collecting HIV status. It's made wow. me rethink using the apps. John Demo- ha! Made me re- maybe rethink it, but I, I still need to get laid. <laughs> it's true. I understand the dilemma. <laughs> what can you use? You got to get laid. You need something. Got to have the app. What else can you do? Going outside doesn't work. Nobody's outside it's anymore. True. Everyone's on their phones. Get off your phones. We need to go back to old-fashioned dating. Yeah. Quick. Is the Assistant Attorney General for National Security. How long does that data live for? It could live forever. Justice Department officials tell NBC News they are concerned about Grindr, the popular dating app for gay men. It's owned by Kunlun Tech, a Chinese gaming company. Sparking concerns, the app's data could be turned over to the Chinese government. Do you have insight into how the Chinese government can obtain data from, say, a Chinese-owned app? What we know is that uh, Chinese law requires a Chinese company to share any information that it has with a Chinese government if it's asked. The information (laughs) that is uh, on a dating app is of great interest to a foreign country's intelligence service. You know that. And your own intelligence (laughs) service. Everyone's intelligence service. Be real. And and let's not pretend that oh they have to share it. it's only because it's mandated by their government no anyone can buy this data yeah it's not so let's not don't let the yeah. fear mongering it's going on everybody yeah. amazon buys data from credit card yeah. companies to track purchases and see what you buy and they scan emails to see what you, they do all kinds of crazy shit there's all kinds of shit going on google does the same you know that we know that because it, it's of the type of data that they would want to paint a picture of your life Exactly. It's a type of data that they'd want to paint a picture of your life. It's good for tracking, good for advertisers, good for everyone. Yeah, and we'll go into how they paint that later. You ready? We got the study. Oh, we're ready? Yeah, I'm ready to go into the study now. We got the study out of control how consumers are exploited by the online advertising industry. Well, first of all, let's realize that the digital content is to a large degree funded by advertising. So rather than paying for services, companies monetize our behavior, attention, and personal data. Yes, because nothing is free. Things run on servers. Even healthy talk show is not free. This podcast has operating costs. That's true. Believe it or not, our freaking, (laughs) and I'm cheap, but I still have to pay a monthly bill for this damn podcast. That's why we keep it cheap, though. HealthyTalkShow.com yeah. slash support. support. Go there. We don't like advertisers. Go click on the PayPal link. Give us money, please. Thank you for everyone who has. Back to the study about advertising and spying. And so the problem with advertising, as we all know, is that it's gotten way more personalized. So they 
are characterizing everybody by age, gender, how many children, your occupation, psychographics. So now they're trying to psychologically profile people, get your interests, your opinions, everything about your lifestyle, behavior. All this is being tracked. All of it. And even more disturbingly, so they go on to say companies such as Adobe, Comcast, Telenor, Verizon, Alibaba, Facebook, Google, and Amazon have all spent significant resources acquiring ad tech companies in recent years. Because ad tech is where it's at. That's where you make the money. You make the money by spying on the people and selling that information to advertisers. It's yeah. really simple. They want to know everything about you so they can program you to buy shit. You buy shit because you are programmed to. You don't, I don't even know it. I'm tell, yes. I assure you, you are being programmed to buy shit. Yeah. There are certain things you order from Amazon because it's Amazon Prime. You're programmed. There are certain yeah. things that mess with your head. And, and that's what they're doing because they're trying to get the timing right too. It's about understanding your pattern so they know, oh, you wake up in the morning. Oh, you, you want coffee. Here's yep. a Starbucks ad. Here's mm -hmm. your coupon. Here's Targeted your ads. Yeah, and, and they're really trying to get into the psychology and understand how you feel at certain times of the day to serve you the ad and this is way different from the advertising you know the tvs we think mm -hmm. of traditionally you're watching your they, they mentioned top gear so i mentioned top great show gear. car show yeah they're pretty cool but oh okay people are watching a car show let's give them car related things no it's much more sinister than that now yes. they're trying to get this personal very they want to know everything when you're pregnant you're going to get ads for being pregnant you're in pregnancy crap sold to you when you're getting married you're going to get ads for Weddings, it's, it's, it's all happening to everybody. And everybody always mentions, oh, you know, doesn't it kind of weird that it kind of seems like my phone's listening because I was talking about something that I saw an ad for it. Yeah, your phone is listening. Yeah. It's true. And then, so the, the other issue too is some consumers are okay with this because we always sign those agreements. You know, they pop up and they say- They don't read them. The EULAs, they don't read them. But, but even but they if, sign them. if you did, it says, oh, we're only collecting de-identified data. So it can't be tracked back. And, you know, no one will know that it's individually you. That's not true. Yeah. So let's, let's go to that nice graph that they made. The data broker graph. Got it. So basically there's these data broker companies in the middle and they're aggregating all this data from so many different and sources. And connecting the dots for people. Yes. Companies. And then so they, they are able to basically re-aggregate this data at, and you have... Uh, individual identifiers. So that's the other thing that people don't talk about. Mm -hmm. Even if you say, oh, I opt out, they give you another signature that's basically your advertising signature, which they can yeah. still figure out who you are. So that And from home, it's an IP address. That's a good way to identify somebody's location and where they're at. It's their IP address. That's You tie that IP address to somebody. That's an identity. That's a really easy way to do it. Basic. Yeah. And so it's it's... It's really with the ridiculous. phones, you do it with GPS and location. It's a little more sinister with the phones. Yeah, so all you need is this little advertising ID or whatever ID that they're using to identify you. And then, look, they have all your records. They, they add that in with public rep records, web scraping, and then they are able to uh, create what they call a digital twin of you. <laughs> digital so, twin. Yeah, so essentially they know everything about you. <laughs> Yeah. So that is, of course, very creepy. Extremely disturbing. Yeah. Uh, the video had also mentioned Grindr selling out to China. Well, Grindr has already exposed uh, homosexual people in countries where homosexuality is illegal. So. Yeah. And there's been some issues with people getting hurt, put away for that. So keep that in mind. Yeah. It's also really disturbing since the consumer is largely unaware of what's going on why is the consumer unaware is that a question i'm not supposed to ask <laughs> <laughs> no no that that's a perfect question i don't know why it's very strange to me i'm very well, aware of what's going on i guess most consumers think that their data is being collected again just to use that specific app that they don't realize that it's being sent off it's there are whole companies essentially devoted to creating this digital profile of you and people aren't aware of those companies. I don't think people disc. care. I think <laughs> if we educate everybody, they're still not going to care because people are not going to stop using Facebook. People do not want honest. That's if Facebook was a dollar a year, it could run the company. I would charge every user just a dollar a year. It'd yeah. be fine. They wouldn't have to do the advertising shit. They, these, someone needs to start that WhatsApp did it. And then Facebook bought them. So unfortunately, 
It's true. I mean, this the study says that people, you know, just kind of reluctantly do this because they don't know what else to do. Because, and you don't, you have to ask yourself what you need. I, I guess would be another. Yeah. What do you need? All this shit. Do you need all these apps? Do you need all of this? Or can you just? It's just ways to for you. If you think about it, it's just ways for you to spend money. If you step away from it, are you saving money? Are you spending more time with family? I hope so. That's usually what the <laughs> what happens. I don't yeah. know. It's, I don't know. Okay. Moving on to more well, technology, or you got more? Well, just just the last thing is because yep. the other thing is people don't really think that it, it's a big deal, but they actually bring up that you know we don't understand how this could be subconsciously monitoring our behavior. The fact that we're being monitored twenty four seven, basically, yeah, everything we do leaves some sort of fingerprint behind. So yeah. this is and this is just ads. This this is just advertising companies. Yeah. This is not even implications for foreign entities or governments or anything, which they're all doing the spying too. Right. But, they but, all want this. Everyone wants the same information. Yeah, and it does bring up the Cambridge Analytical thing, how th- that was used to manipulate voters. People, yeah, which we've talked about. Yep, both parties are. Everyone was tapping into that information to get voter data and to manipulate voters and screw Bernie Sanders. Do all this. Thing, do all these things. It's information is power. They're weaponizing the information against us. People, we need to step up. We need to stop. We need to demand encryption, VPNs, all these things. Yeah get these companies to stop spying on us they don't need all this data it's all waste too let's talk about global warming and yeah if we want to talk about carbon footprints what about all the the energy that is required technology Mm -hmm. 5g all these 5g repeaters we don't think about that it's okay anyways healthy all the spying takes a lot of energy healthytalkshow.com slash support we're not trying to sell you crap we're not getting you on email lists and selling you out thank you for Send us 50 bucks. Thank value you. Value for value. Value for value. KPIX. Who else NSA is buying NSA cybersecurity <laughs> experts announced the flaw in Microsoft's operating system in a phone call to the... There was a flaw that the NSA found for Windows 10. ...media and urged all Microsoft users to install a new security patch immediately. Today's patch has a number of critical and important patches. And we urge that we're going to implement all of them. The NSA says government and military agencies got the patch earlier and they are secure. What? Experts say the flaw yeah. left unfixed could give hackers an open door. There is a critical vulnerability inside the Windows operating system that would allow hackers or governments all over the world to potentially spy on what happens inside the Windows operating system, not just for your home PC, but for computers that run systems at banks, power plants, and other systems across the world. Yeah, NSA gave Windows. They said, hey, you have a security patch. We got a, we got a vulnerability we found. How long did the NSA have it? Yeah. How long were they spying on us with that same vulnerability? I like how they said, oh, yeah, we patched our stuff earlier. Yeah. How long ago? <laughs> our stuff's good to go now. Yeah. But it's because they worked. Yeah, it's uh, They're spying. Everyone's spying. Lock your shit down. Stop posting nudes on the internet. <laughs> just get off the internet really. yeah because now your smart tv spying on you washington post oh my God. television makers have figured out advertisers are willing to pay for data about what you watch so they built in a technology called automatic content recognition or acr to track you here's how it works every few moments acr records just a few pixels or frames of whatever's on your screen creating fingerprints Wow. The TV sends these yes. to a company. That can- Talking about the data, yeah. advertising markers and shit. This is the same exact thing, but these are cameras looking at your TV and looking at what you're watching on your TV. How creepy is that? Compares them to a database, like Shazam for video. The result? A detailed record of your household's TV time. What you watch says a lot about your interests and personality. The TV companies say this isn't personal information because TVs are usually shared by a whole household. But oh my god yeah that i like is, that it's not personal information it's household information that is it's the not, most bold it's thing not the i've same. ever heard it's not the same it's, per- it's household information not the same as personal still find it valuable to judge you acr data allows them to know which household is watching a particular program so that they can target ads to impressionable audiences your phone your laptop and your ipad all have something in common with your smart tv an ip address your home's identity on the internet that address is part of the ACR data your TV beams out. 
so companies can link up what you watch with what you browse, play, and yes. do across all your screens. So that beautiful. <laughs> that goes back into how they build that detailed data profile yep. on you. That's why it's valuable. That's how they're all making money. Why are why are There's TV why are TV manufacturers doing that? You bought the damn TV. You spent yeah. money on the TV. Why are they tracking? Because they want to make more money. A marketer using ACR can figure out if you saw their ad and repeat it on all your other wow. devices. Even after you leave your house, ACR data follows you. Marketers combine it with information about where you go and what you spend money on. Using ACR and voter databases, campaigns can know which shows persuadable voters watch most. Wow. Even when the programs oh, yeah. have nothing to do with politics. Why is this happening? The shocking answer is because you let it. U.S. law says your video watching history is private. So TV makers are supposed to ask you to opt in to track. Sometimes the opt-in is hidden behind legalese when you set up your TV or lumped into helpful seeming options like personalized recommendations. All right. Wow. So Washington Post talking about ACR, automated content recognition, whatever cameras installed on TVs to watch. Basically see, watch what you're watching on the screen. Very creepy. You can turn it off in the settings on the smart TV. All smart TVs, you can turn it off. It's under... On my Vizio, it's under like smart interactive in information or some shit. Turn it off. But I have this thing called a pie hole we put on our network recently. And I actually caught my Vizio TV pinging out at like 12 a.m. when it was turned off. A little creeped out by that. We're going to keep monitoring that. It was turned yeah. off and the TV was still signaling messages. Every time I turn on this smart TV, by the way, smart TVs track the shit out of you. It sends out information huh. to Netflix. Even though I don't use Netflix ever. It's always sending out information to Netflix. All these. There's so much information being sent out to you. Anytime you click something on a website, you're getting so you're being tracked everywhere you go. Do you get served a Netflix ad since they know you're still not a paying Netflix customer? <laughs> Maybe. Like, hey, spend some money, Jeep. And how soon we forget back in 2017, FTC from their website, Vizio to pay $2.2 million to FTC, state of New Jersey, to settle charges. It collected viewing histories on 11 million smart televisions without users' consent. So they could just flip on that camera. Yeah. Whenever they want. And then what's the point of these fines? Do they just do it again? Yeah, they just do it more and make more money so yeah. they can pay the higher fine next so, time. So think about how much they must be making if two point two million. Yeah, is they're still nothing. in business. Yeah, they're fuck you. That's great. We made we made a hundred million on that. So it's a great deal. What a wash. Yeah, we made yeah. great money. And let's not forget about WikiLeaks. This is back in March 9th, 2017, Democracy Now! The documents also outline a CIA... WikiLeaks publishes thousands of alleged secret CIA documents. ...and British intelligence program called Weeping Angel, through which the spy agency can hack into a Samsung smart television and turn it into a surveillance device that records audio conversations even when it appears to be off. Other documents describe ways to hack into Skype, Wi-Fi networks, PDFs, and commercial antivirus programs. The leak also shows the CIA has reportedly looked for ways to hack into cars and trucks, which WikiLeaks Whoa. said, quote, would permit the CIA <laughs> oh, yeah? to engage in nearly undetectable assassinations, unquote. Wow. Other documents outline how the CIA has used the U.S. consulate in Frankfurt, Germany, as a covert base to spy on Europe, the Middle East, and Africa. Y'all getting it yet? Yeah. Why well, just everything don't disconnect buy, everything yeah. from the internet? Get an <laughs> old car, don't have it do any Yeah, updates. don't get a car with the internet in it. Do yeah. not get a Tesla. It's got the built-in 4G modem or 3G know, whatever they're running I'll on. I'll drive you straight to the police station. Ay ay ay. My ah. No, it is it is really disgusting. It is. But we don't track you. It's true. We Thank don't you. We don't serve you ads. We don't track you. All we need is your love and support. Thank you to those who have donated. We've been receiving so much love. We really appreciate it. Yes. Thank you for the $50, everybody. We really appreciate you helping us out a lot. We're trying to buy something really cool. Yeah. So if you want to give us some love, head on over to healthytalkshow.com slash support. We really appreciate it. We record Healthy Talk Show live on Mondays and Fridays, usually at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's 3 a.m. UTC over at healthytalkshow.com forward slash live. Please send your questions, comments, or concerns over to ask at healthytalkshow.com. Love and light. Love and light.